So now we'll go ahead and, and start measurables to determine the amount of deformity as well as the correction needed. So we'll start out with the AP pelvis here and we'll go to the bone setter app. Okay. So now we're going to head going to go ahead and start measuring our deformity. So we'll start with the AP pelvis here and we're going to measure the CCD or neck shaft angle using the bone setter app. So go up to the upper left corner where you can see angle and you're going to draw a line that is parallel with the femoral anatomical axis as you can see here and then a line parallel to the axis of the femoral neck and so that's the involved side and you can see that that angle is approximately 112 degrees. You will then go to the normal side and do the same thing. So go to the upper left hand corner, pick angle, do a line down the anatomical axis of the femur shaft and then also down the axis of the neck and you can get that and that is basically about 140 degrees. And there'll be some slight difference in measurements but this is kind of the goals or averages that you're gonna get. And so after that, you notice uh, that you need to measure the Powell's angle for the femoral neck fracture. So you're going to create another angle by going to the upper left-hand corner and creating a line going parallel to the horizontal and one line that goes along the femoral neck fracture. And so that angle that's created is the Powell's angle. And for this fracture, it's approximately 63 degrees. The other deformity that you're going to measure is the leg length differences. And so you're going to create a line in the upper left hand corner, click on that and draw a line along the bottom of the ischium and go from lesser trochanter to lesser trochanter, just go across the screen. You will then try to match with another line to measure distance on the involved side to meet the same area on the lesser trochanter that you can see on the normal side and that will be used as how to get the leg length difference. And it's approximately two to 2.3 centimeters. So if you look at our overall deformity evaluation from this AP pelvis x-ray, you have the left hip CCD or neck shaft angle of 140 degrees. You have the right CCD angle of 112 degrees. You have a Powell's angle of 63 degrees and a leg length difference of approximately 2.3 centimeters. So now we need to come up with your plan to do the uh, osteotomy. Now that we've looked at our imaging of the non-union, we're gonna start making our measurements. So you go to the upper left-hand corner and click on angle, and you draw a line down the anatomical axis of the femur, which you can see that by clicking on the left-hand or clicking the left button on your mouse and dragging it distally to create the first line. And then you, next you create the line that's parallel to the neck axis in the same way, clicking and dragging it. And now you've got your angle for the normal side, which should be around 140 degrees. Now we're gonna do the same side on the non-union side. So we're gonna go up to the upper left-hand corner, create an angle, and you can see that this angle is a different color and you're gonna go down the neck, or down the uh, shaft anatomical axis, and then the second line is along the neck axis, and so now you've created your neck shaft angle or CCD angle on the involved side, and that's the angle in green. You can see that measurement on the left, and it should basically be around 112 degrees. So next, we're gonna go ahead and measure the Powell's angle for the femoral neck fracture non-union, and so you're gonna go up to angle again on the upper left-hand side, you're going to create a line that's horizontal, and this line is yellow. And then the next line is along the femoral neck fracture. And you can go ahead and zoom in by using the magnifying perforated box here in the upper right-hand corner, clicking on that, clicking the mouse, and creating a box by dragging down and to the right, and that will zoom that area within the box. And that will allow you to get a better allow you to get better visualization of the femoral neck fracture to create an accurate angle. And so that angle should be around 63 degrees. Lastly, we will identify our leg length discrepancy. So you can go ahead and get back out to the normal size by clicking the box next to the magnifying. <laughs> yeah. 
Now that we've seen our imaging of the non-union, we're going to go ahead and make our measurements. So we'll start off with the neck shaft or CCD angle. So you're going to go to the upper left-hand corner, click angle, and we're going to measure the normal side first. So you're going to click and drag the line down the femoral shaft anatomical axis. And then the next line to help create the angle will be a line that's down the femoral neck axis, and so that angle is the CCD or neck shaft angle, and you can see that it's approximately 140 degrees. Now we'll do the same thing on the involved side, so you go up to angle. This will be a different color. All of the angles have different colored lines, and you can use that as a reference on the left-hand side where it gives you the measurement. So we're going to go along the neck axis here. We've already done our anatomical axis line down the shaft, and so that angle should be around 112 degrees. So now we're going to go ahead and measure our Powell's angle. So we're going to create an angle again. Click on the upper left-hand corner. Create a horizontal line, which again, this is a different color. And then now we're going to go ahead and zoom in on the femoral neck fracture. So you can create your angle, hit the zoom icon, which you can see that perforated box. You click on the left uh, mouse button and drag it down into the right to zoom in on the area of interest. And now you can get a better or more accurate angle al along the uh, femoral neck fracture. And so the angle should be approximately 63 degrees. So the last measurement we'll make on this image is the leg lengths. And so we're going to create a line. So you go up to line on the upper left hand corner. To get out of the zoom area, you just go ahead and do the centering box at the top there on the right next to the zoom in box. You're creating a line by dragging it from the left to the right and going along the, uh, the bottom edge of both uh, ischium. And then you're going to see where that meets the lesser trochanter on both sides. So basically where it meets the normal side, as you can see, um, we're going to try to measure the difference between the two of the normal and abnormal side. So now we're going to create another line to get the measurement. And so we're going to go from the same point on the lesser trochanter on the abnormal side and draw a line down to the line that goes along the ischium. That is the difference in leg lengths. And it should be approximately 2 centimeters or 2.3 centimeters. And you can zoom in again by using that same box in the upper right hand corner to get a better or more accurate depiction of the difference. Now you can reset that image back to a normal view by clicking that centering box on the upper right hand corner. And now we've got our deformity measurements. Go ahead and switch the PowerPoint. So this is a summary. This is a summary of the uh, deformity that we have. We have a left CCD angle or neck shaft angle of 140 degrees. We have the right side of 112 degrees. We have a Powell's angle of 63 degrees and a leg length difference of 2.3 centimeters. Next slide. So now we have to figure out what the plan is. Next slide. So the equipment that we have, we have the large fragment or basic set. We have the blade plate instrumentation. We have a 120 degree osteotomy blade plate. We have the bone model for the deformity. And then we have the bone setter templating software that you've already started using. Next slide. So again, just to summarize our issues, we have a femoral neck nine union. That's a Powell's three fracture. We have some varus collapse. We have leg length discrepancy of about two centimeters. We have retained hardware and the cannulated screws that are in, in within the neck. And then the good thing is that we don't have any version or sagittal plane uh, deformity, which makes this osteotomy a one plane osteotomy and it makes it simpler. Next slide. So what we need, we need a 30 degree coronal plane osteotomy to recreate or roughly recreate the opposite CCD angle. This will decrease the Powell's grade or Powell's angle by one type or grade. And so 30 degrees of correction will do this. The leg length correction will be based on the amount of wedge removed and the osteotomy position. Next slide, and then back to bone setter. That's the one where I said make a horizontal line. Oh, I mean, what, what, that's a line showing what? Is, As a reference to the horizontal. But I mean, how do they know where to make that line? 
Oh, I like position. Okay. Can I just say it now and you can feed it in? Okay. The first line for the Powell's angle is going to be a horizontal line and it's typically made above the hip area. And then the second line is the line that goes along the femoral neck fracture. And the difference is the Powell's angle. Yeah. You can't even use the ischial line because that's not always horizontal. That's the stupidity of the whole thing. Um, so well, I, I can say it. We'll do, I'll just say that. So to create a Powell's angle, you want to first make a line that's parallel to the horizontal, which is typically made above the hip area just across the pelvis. And you can be close to the hip or a little bit farther away. And then the second line is going to be the line that's parallel to the femoral neck fracture. Is that better? Or I know, he doesn't like it. So next we're going to go ahead and measure our Powell's angle. So the first line that you draw is uh, parallel to the horizontal. So you're going to place that above the hip joint and take it from left to right. And then the next line will be a line that's along the femoral neck fracture. And so you can go ahead and zoom. Do I need to say that, the zoom part? You can get that figured out. OK. Um, if you have any questions on how to make a Powell's angle, go ahead and discuss with your table instructor. Now we're going to go ahead and get ready to do the osteotomy itself. So we'll go ahead and get rid of our current angles and lines. So you go ahead and click on one of the circles associated with that line and then you can delete the item by the X in the upper right hand corner. And now you're back to a new x-ray with no measurements. So the first thing we're going to do is make a tracing of the affected side. And so you go ahead and go to the upper left hand corner to do the tracing and you can zoom in on the area to make this simpler and you go ahead and do that with that zoom box which is in the upper right hand corner so now you go ahead and click on whichever area you're going to start on and then just gradually go around the entire proximal femur by holding the mouse button as you go and you can make small clicks to get around the curved areas and it will keep on going until you meet up with the first circle so go ahead at the bottom of the x-ray, go straight across, and then continue to follow up. And don't worry about the screw heads. Just go ahead and go along the, the cortical margins. And so now that you've gotten back to your reference point, it creates this red shaded area, and that's the affected side that we're going to use. So next, you go ahead and you can click on your x-ray, and then you can go ahead and flip it to make that the normal side right behind the affected side. And so you can see that the horizontal flip of the image got your normal side flipped over so you don't have to go ahead and cut out the normal side. That is your reference. So next we'll kind of center the affected side on the normal side as far as match up the greater trochanters. You can see the difference in deformity and go ahead and zoom in on that area by creating your box and using the zoom box. And you can see the difference in head height as well as CCD angle. And so now we have to figure out what osteotomy that we're going to do. Go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint. And then go down. Keep going. It's like five or six slides down. There you go. Uh, so you need to figure out what you can do to manipulate your osteotomy. So you can make an opening wedge, which you can see as an example on the screen to the right. And so that would create a fairly large gap. And the downside of that is, sure. So why you, we can do the same thing on both sides of this thing, right? Like this. So now we're going to do an example of what your osteotomy level can be and how you can manipulate to change the proximal segment. So we're going to go ahead and click on the uh, line box in the upper left hand corner. We're going to draw a line where we want our transverse cut for our osteotomy. 
and then we're going to go ahead and go to the cutout tool by selecting first selecting the entire segment that box will come up and then you can see the scissors in the upper right hand corner you're going to click on that and then basically you can draw anywhere in this area to include the entire proximal segment the main thing is that you get that transverse line and now you can see that it's made it made basically a box and you can manipulate it so first you can look at what happens when you do an opening wedge osteotomy and basically you create the center of access or center of rotation point by clicking on the bottom left hand you can see where it clicks from a red mark through it or it's clear then you can grab it with the mouse click and put it to where you want the osteotomy so we're going to create an opening wedge your center of rotation is lateral so you can see that that's great as far as increasing your head height but you create this more unstable osteotomy uh, and it takes longer to heal and it puts more stress on your implant and so now let's see what happens when we cr uh, create a closing wedge osteotomy so you move the center of rotation to the medial side and this is if you basically do a closing wedge and resecting the entire thing. And so you can see what happens when you rotate that. That's the amount of wedge that you're resecting. And then you can basically play around with what happens by moving the center of rotation more lateral to see what happens with the closing wedge osteotomy. So if we can go ahead and go to the PowerPoint. Well, you um, you can make up for that some by that's what the point of this part is to show this. So just to emphasize the points of a closing wedge and what you can do, a closing wedge is a much more stable osteotomy because you have a compressible surface. It offloads the implant some and it tends to heal faster because of the broader healing surface. And so if you do a closing wedge osteotomy, this is basically resecting the entire wedge. And you can see that you're not getting all of your head height back. So what you can then do, next slide, is try to determine what the, where the osteotomy rotation or hinge point will be and the effect on the head height. So this is the resecting the entire wedge with the pivot point medially. And so you can see a line drawn from the center of the femoral head down where these two lines continue to, after the intersection, continue to go to create this difference in height. And so that's if you have the, the hinge point medially. Now if you go to the next slide, if you move that pivot point or axis of rotation more laterally, you can see that you can almost get two centimeters back and still have a fairly broad healing surface. And so that for me was where I thought the osteotomy should go. Next slide. So if you look at your extremity alignment film, which is an important film to get to make sure that you're not altering their mechanical axis and make their knee into more valgus or that sort of thing, you want to get that preoperatively. Next slide. So if you can shift the, the closing wedge, you can also shift it along the ramp of the osteotomy. As you can see here, if you medialize the shaft, next slide, you have the, oh, go back you have this effect on the mechanical access. So you're going to basically have a shorter leg, the shaft is medialized, and that's the effect on the mechanical access, which can create more valgus. If you lateralize the shaft, which will allow for an increase in leg length, it, number one, changes the proximal femoral anatomy a lot to potentially make an eventual hip replacement or any other surgery that requires uh, getting something down the anatomical axis more difficult, but you do gain uh, leg length. But you have to really be mindful of the effect on the mechanical axis. Next slide. So if you look at my planned osteotomy, your anatomical axis is really unchanged and you can still account for the deformity that you need to account for. Back to... So just before you go ahead and get back to your normal deformity, you can see that in the bottom right hand corner as you're rotating that segment, you will see the degrees change. And so that can help you 
understand how much of an angular correction you're getting with rotating the closing wedge or opening wedge based on that center of rotation. And so now we'll go back to where we take the cutout away and get back to a normal non-union by clicking the reverse by, by uh, clicking on the undo button until you get back to where you can see your outline of your femoral non-union. And now we're gonna go ahead and do our planning for our insertion of the blade plate as well as the osteotomy. So we're gonna create a wire that's 90 degrees to the anatomical axis. So you go ahead and grab the K wire. Are they grabbing K wires? No, on your... So on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see a search tool, and that will help bring up the implants you need. And so if you put, OK. We'll need like four of them. Well, he's going to have them on the screen. Yeah. No, he's going to. We have to tell him where it's at. Yeah, it's just going to be right here. It'll be sitting right there on the screen. So we need to tell him how to take away the magnification. So to be able to access the K wires that are already on your screen, you will use the demagnifying glass and go to around 50%. And then you want to use the select tool on the upper left hand side and click on the K wire. And that will allow you to manipulate the K wire. So then go ahead and zoom in back to your femoral neck non union using that zoom in tool. You're going to place this wire 90 degrees to the anatomical axis along the femoral shaft. So you got to go down. You're going to do your reference wire first. And so basically, you can rotate it until you are 90 degrees to the anatomical axis. Uh, the only problem with this is that I may need it uh, needed up so 10 degrees uh, because. So now that we've got our tracings done, let's go ahead and determine our implant. Next slide. So first, you want to place a wire 90 degrees to the anatomical axis of the femur. And you can see that that wire is placed there. Next, you'll go ahead and determine your blade plate entry site for the 30 degree osteotomy using the 120 degree blade plate. So another reference wire approximately, and you can measure how far down from the tip of the greater trochanter you're gonna place this wire. But because the 120 degree plate will give us 30 degrees of correction, when you place the shaft of the plate down to the bone, it really takes the math out of it and you can place that wire parallel to the first reference wire. Next. So you can see that 90 degree angle is created. Next slide. And so your parallel wire is just above the chisel entry site. And so your chisel entry site will be right below that wire. And then you wanna make your osteotomy reference wire. So go ahead and go to the next slide. So you make that first cut as a transverse cut and you're gonna place that wire parallel to the previous two wires because it is another 90 degree wire. And now we need to create our 30 degree oblique cut. And so this is where I wanted my osteotomy to intersect or the amount of wedge that I wanted to take out. So you place that wire 30 degrees in reference to that 90 degree wire. And now we're gonna go to the blade plate application. So next slide. We're gonna use that 120 degree 85 millimeter osteotomy blade plate. We're gonna place that plate just below that 90 degree ref reference wire. And so the, next slide. So all of the wire is in place, your blade plate is in place, and now you can perform your cut. And that's what it'll look like at the end. And this is your plan, next, next slide. This is your plan and what the final x-ray looked like. And then you can go ahead, and, next slide. Go ahead and see what the change was for the mechanical access, and these are extremity alignment views before and after surgery. And now we'll go ahead and have you execute the plan. So I didn't really chunk it.